I assume many of you are already aware of the recent controversy surrounding the Vatican document that purportedly suggests Pope Francis has sanctioned the blessing of the same-sex unions. Numerous Catholic figures in the Western media have attempted to provide clarification on this matter. However, I was pleasantly surprised to see Father Joseph Edad from the Divine Retreat Center UK taking the initiative to explain the document to the Indian Catholic community. In this regard, I would like to go through his video step by step and share my thoughts. Let's begin. In the first clip, Father Joseph clarifies that the document does not alter the church teaching on marriage. In fact, it reaffirms it. Let's listen to him. The letter clarifies very clearly the Catholic Church, according to the Bible teaching, cannot accept same-sex marriages and it is completely against it and will never permit any same-sex marriages and will never endorse it. And marriage is always between a male and female and that is exactly again uh, uh, emphasized through this article now what is the controversy here is is about the blessing because there are so many types and varieties of blessing that is also mentioned in that article there are three over four as father joseph states the document mentions three kinds of blessings one is the sacramental blessing second liturgical blessing and third spontaneous blessing in the realm of sacramental blessings for marriage the catholic church in this document and otherwise has explicitly asserted that it is confined for the union of a man and a woman in a monogamous relationship while at the same time emphasizing that sexual intimacy is permissible exclusively within the bounds of marriage for the purpose of spousal unity and procreation. So the document is very clear that the sacramental blessings for the same-sex union is a no-go. Now coming to the liturgical blessings. First, it cannot be confused with sacramental blessing. Liturgical blessings are prayers invoking God's favor, protection or sanctification upon persons, objects or events. Like for example, blessing of a person who is writing an exam or blessing of a vehicle or blessing of an anniversary celebration, so on and so forth. They are expressions of church's intercession and desire for divine blessings. The document clearly states that even liturgical blessings cannot be offered for same-sex unions because the relationship itself is morally illicit. I think this part of the document specifically addresses the German bishops who have been giving liturgical blessings to same-sex couples. Finally, the document addresses spontaneous blessings. This takes place when individuals approach a priest in various settings such as the church, a retreat or a prayer group seeking his blessings. It is generally useful for Catholic priests to offer blessings upon request, regardless of the person's sinful life, while at the same time not endorsing or condoning it. Father Joseph effectively elaborates this concept. Let's listen to him. For example, there are so many people who are living together without the sacrament of marriage. But at the same time, they come for retreats. Even here, even just last week, there are people who came for retreats, but they were living together. And we have taught them the importance of the sacrament of marriage and the sin of living together. And they also have come for blessing. And they have come for blessing as a priest. It is, it is my duty and it is my, uh, uh, the, my duty to show the mercy and compassion and pray for them. And when I pray for them, I'm not endorsing the living together and I'm not supporting it. And I'm, but I'm praying for them so that they may come out of these things soon with the help and grace of God. The same way the church says, if a person, a couple who, or so-called couple of same-sex union, if they come for asking for blessing, as with the same mentality, with the same compassion, with the same mercy, pray for them and bless them. That doesn't mean we endorse that kind of union, but we are praying in such a way that they may get the grace to overcome these temptations and weaknesses of their body and lead a holy and holy life. It is true that the document encourages priests not to overlook individuals in irregular relationships, but rather to approach them pastorally even when they seek blessings. However, as many observers have pointed out, there is a concern that individuals in same-sex unions may perceive this spontaneous blessing as a form of affirmation for their lifestyle, especially when it does not include a call to repentance. I think this aspect is the weakness of this whole document. The church in this document should have made it evidently clear that she does not have the authority to bless sin, which is a same-sex union, but can give blessings to sinners, which is people who have homosexual tendencies. In support of Pope Francis, I would like to say throughout the document, he consistently strives 
to achieve a nuanced balance by advocating for the acceptance of individuals in irregular relationships such as same-sex couples while simultaneously addressing the sinful nature of their actions which is engaging in homosexual acts recognizing pope francis compassionate disposition his strong emphasis on pastoral outreach might tend to seem like he's lenient on sin but that is not the case navigating this wrong perception has been a defining aspect of his entire papacy starting from the moment he spoke the words who am i to judge in the final clip father joseph expresses his concern about a conspiracy that the media is unveiling against the catholic church particularly in response to this document let's listen in so many so called media who does it wants to have those who have a conspiracy against the catholic church while leading and and uh, spreading misleading and misguiding information and it is affecting so many youth and so many people who are so strong believers and strong followers of the catholic church i respectfully disagree with father joseph on this matter There is a valid concern among the Catholic community that this document is vague and ambiguous and the media including some Catholic outlets are actively working to comprehend its actual teaching by posing legitimate questions. The sincere effort to understand and decipher should not be unfairly labeled as an attack or conspiracy against the Catholic Church. Having said that, there is a possibility that certain fringe elements in the media might exploit the situation to push their own interpretations and potentially create confusion among the faithful. Even if this is true we should encourage the catholic youth to be more responsible and exercise caution in selecting their sources of information and to be discerning we cannot simply go around blaming the rest of the world for our own actions and choices don't you agree well with that i urge you to keep the holy father in your prayers especially for the mission that the holy spirit has for him god bless you